So today we're going to have a look at the Debian 13. I have downloaded the Net Installer and placed it on my Ventoy disk. So when we first boot it up, we have a graphical install, install, advanced options, accessible dark contrast menu installer, and install with speech synthesis. Under our uh, advanced, we have graphical expert install, graphical rescue, graphical automated install, expert install, rescue mode. So we'll go ahead and press escape and we'll just go back to a standard normal graphical install since that's what most people are going to be looking at doing. All right, so we start in selecting our language here. So we will select on English and continue, United States and continue, American English keyboard and continue. That's going to go through and detect the various pieces of hardware and set everything up. This particular computer, there's no Wi-Fi, there's no Bluetooth, so it shouldn't find any of that. But it is configuring your basic uh, hard-lined Ethernet connection. Enter the host name. We'll just keep it as Video Beast is fine. We'll hit continue. Domain name, local, that's good. And then over here, this is where we set up users and passwords. All right, so to allow direct password-based access via the root account, you can set a password for the account. Alternatively, you can lock the root account's password by leaving this setting empty and instead use the system's initial user account, which will be set up in the next step to gain administrative privileges. So that's the typical way that uh, you would set up an account with a pseudo group. So this will be enabled for you by adding that initial user to the pseudo group. So if we leave this blank, we will have our first user set up as a pseudo. So we're going to leave this guy blank. So we're not actually going to click anything here. We're just going to continue. So a user account will be created for you to use instead of a root account for non-administrative activities. Use the real name of this user. Uh, this information will be used, for instance, as the default origin for emails. And we're just going to do switch to Linux. There we are. There's our full name of the new user. So username for the account. I'm just going to use Debian. Now we're going to choose a password. And since this is on real hardware and not on a um, virtual machine, we're going to select uh, a better password than I use for my virtual uh, virtual machines. And now we're going to configure the clock. So Eastern time zone, that is correct. And so now we have the options. Do you want to do manual? Do we want to use the largest continuous free space? Use the entire disk. We can do the entire disk with LVM, or we can use the entire disk and set up encrypted LVM. If this were a main regular production system, I would encrypt it. We're not going to go through that here. I'm going to use the entire disk and set up LVM. And uh, this, uh, the first disk here is SDA. This is the actual hard disk. This is my, uh, this is my drive for uh, testing out distributions. And this 124 SDB, this is the Ventoy disk. So we're going to select the first disk there. And then here we need to separate out. Do we want to separate partitions and things for each one? Uh, the basic, if you're new to Linux or you just want a more simple way of running your operating systems, this is generally what I do. Just use the uh, the regular, the, the default one. Puts everything into one single partition. Uh, now, the advantage of switching things out into different partitions is that it's easier if you need to move data somewhere else to repoint it a lot easier than it is if it's all in the same partition. So before log logical management can be configured, the current partition scheme has to be written. So uh, this is going to ask, are you going to wipe out the existing drive and install everything? We are going to say yes. So this is the amount of available space after partitioning. That is expected. And if you continue, the changes will be written to the disk. This is your final, uh, your final issue. We're going to be wiping out that particular disk. So we're going to toggle that down to yes, partition everything out, and we are going to be beginning the process of the installation. So this is the point that the disk is erased, and now it is installing the base system. So we will come back when there is something else to do here.
Now that the base system is installed, now we need to configure the package manager. So once again, it automatically selects the United States based on the location. And now we need to choose our mirrors. I generally just use the Debian one. So if, you're, if you know you're near any of these other sites, you can pick any of those. I'm just going to pick the, the basic uh, Debian repository there. So if you need to use proxy to access it, enter it here. Most people are just going to leave this one blank. So now it's going to configure apt. The next question asks us about the popularity contest. This is the one controversial thing which will count out all the applications and submit a basic list of applications that people use to see which ones people are using the most. Now the good thing is that the default is to not install it. Uh, if you hit no, it does, uh, then by default it does not install it. Uh, some other distros turn this on by default and some people don't even know it's running. We're, in this case, we're just going to keep it at no and continue on. And then it's going to start selecting, downloading, and installing some other software. So now we have the choice as to what we want to install as far as our system here. So we have our Debian desktop environment. So you want to choose what your environment happens to be. Uh, and I'm curious which version of Cinnamon they're giving us right here. Hopefully it's the latest version uh, that is available from the Mint team or at least pretty close to it. So I'm going to deselect GNOME. We'll go with Cinnamon there. Uh, do you want to set up a web server or not? This would be... Uh, like, uh, and I believe it's defaults to just a basic Apache server. We don't need that. SSH server, we don't need that. Standard system utilities, this is going to be uh, basic things like um, uh, disk usage analyzers, um, uh, a, an application to show you what disks, stuff like that. And then uh, there's, uh, I'm not sure what a Debian blend is for installation. I'm not sure what that one happens to be. Just a Debian blend for installation. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what that one is. So the final steps to installation were complete. So it tells us it's time to reboot into the system. Make sure you remove the installation media. And we want to choose continue to reboot. Right, so we have rebooted into the grub menu here for Debian. So we have advanced options, which is going to give us uh, recovery mode on a couple different uh, Linux kernels there. A couple different versions of the Linux kernels, we should say. We'll just go ahead and start it. Now we've reached our login screen here. Let's pull these down. We have Cinnamon and we have the experimental Wayland. Our default is our basic. Uh, our username was Debian and our password. We'll enter that. So here we are on the desktop and I believe I have this all reset to exactly how it started. I did install Simple Screen Recorder and I installed a couple other themes just because I think by default it's still pretty ugly out of the box. So here's what we get uh, looking at our various icons and whatnot. Let me go ahead and hide the uh, system folders there I was tinkering with. So the first thing we want to do is let's have a look at the uh, system information. We're running Debian uh, 13, Cinnamon version is 6.4.10, Linux kernel is 6.12, and you can see the rest of the system information that I have running over here. So by default, we do have a software manager. They gave us the GNOME software store. Not my favorite, but it is functional, and you can set it up to use if you want to do Snap, if you want to do Flatpak, you can set it up to use all of those. By default, Debian does not have any of that. We have only repository software from Debian. And that honestly is probably a good way to, uh, to go. As far as the, um, uh, the pre-installed software, it does have what some people might consider a little bloat. Uh, some of these things are stuff that I, I do like in my operating system. There's a backup tool. A calculator, a character map, there's a font explorer, a disks utility. These are things that you don't necessarily use every day. Some people may never use them, but they are good system utilities. I'm not a huge fan of the big suite of games they give us, so I'd have to go in here and like remove all of these different games. Uh, if I were using this in production, I just don't want them on the system. We have our 
Uh, it's just some basic stuff. I installed GIMP. Uh, that is something that did not come pre-installed. And it is the latest version of the GIMP. You can see it is the 3.0. I believe it's 3.0.4 at the time I'm recording this. Uh, so you do have the nice new version of GIMP with a lot of the nice new features, uh, some of the, um, the layer, uh, layer settings and stuff like that. We do have the LibreOffice suite. Everything except the databasing is installed by default. Of course, Debian uses the Firefox ESR, the long-term stable of the Firefox, rather than the one that constantly updates itself. It is still shipping with HexChat. Even though HexChat no longer has a maintainer, uh, it is not yet broken, and so uh, it does still ship with HexChat. We have Pigeon, uh, Remna for remote desktop, and we have Thunderbird installed by default for email. You see over here we have the whole suite of LibreOffice minus the databasing. Uh, we can install the databasing if you need it, and I'm the geek that actually kind of does sometimes. We do have some uh, two applications here re relying on the CD drives, which is odd because most computers are not coming with CD drives these days. But uh, since Debian does really focus on uh, on sometimes older hardware, sometimes just long-term hardware, it does make sense to include those applications. I, of course, uh, do, do carry around an external U, uh, USB-powered DVD drive for those cases I do actually need something written or read from a disk drive. So I do have that, although I do still have a CD drive on my, this particular computer. So that's good. We have a basic uh, videos. I'm not sure which one this is exactly, but it's just going to be uh, browser. I failed to find something. Okay. That's a, uh, I have no idea what's going on with that, but let's have a look at what we got here. Uh, this is Totem. That's what I was thinking it was, but I'm not sure what that error is about, but uh, I'd have to look into that a little bit more detail. Your basic administration, I did install HTOP. I just kind of want to see how the system performed here. We'll leave this over here. So it is running on 1.46 gigs as we're just kind of looking around here. And let's see what else we have. Everything else in here is your basic utilities. We have the basic system monitor. We have the synaptic package manager, the terminal. We have two different terminals on here. And then, of course, our preferences is everything going to be under our settings panel as well. So having a look at our settings panel. Uh, this is, of course, the default, which I think is kind of ugly. I'm not a huge fan of these icons. They're functional, but it's not particularly pretty. So in appearances first, uh, we do have a variety of different um, uh, different um, desktop uh, pictures you can install from here. You just kind of look around and see what's in here, what do you like. And, of course, you can use your own photos as well, just like anything else. So the other things in here, there is um, under the themes. As I said, I'm not a huge fan of the way it's default themed, even though it looks better now than it did since they did their adjustments. They didn't include a lot of the other windows and borders and things like that that like you find inside of uh, Linux Mint cinnamon and so you'll see the simplified settings here just has custom and that is all we have of course on Linux Mint there's a lot of different color settings and things like that you'd have to install those extra themes to get those so what I like to do is there's a theme called arc theme and uh, I like installing that and I'll just convert to arc dark that gives us a, a nice arc there for icons I install the papyrus so we'll go with the, the papyrus, and then here we have the arc dark as well. So that's what I do to make my cinnamon look really nice uh, pretty much across the board. So you can choose your own things, of course. You can go under the add remove, and you can search out different themes that are available in here. But uh, as I said, I use that Arc theme. It's in Arch and Debian repositories. So most of my systems that are not Linux Mint that I'm running Cinnamon, I actually am using uh, using Arc Dark. It's just, it's nice, it's clean, it's flat, and, and it works. It stays out of my way. It, uh, it doesn't, uh, you know, it doesn't look bad. It's, you know, it's everything about it is, is pretty good. So uh, that's actually what I like to do as far as our theming is concerned. Your basic preferences, we're not going to go through all these. I've done a lot of videos in detail about Cinnamon, so I'll refer you to those videos. We do have online accounts, however. Let's see what we have. 
So we have Google, we have Basic Web Dev, NextCloud, Microsoft, we have um, Microsoft Exchange, IMAP, and SMTP, uh, Kerbios, and Microsoft 365. So you have a wide variety of applications here available to you if you're looking at uh, using online accounts. And many people are, whether you're more privacy focused like myself, NextCloud, or you've sold your soul to the devil like Microsoft. I know, I'm kidding. I'm just being facetious. Uh, but it is good that you can come in here and you can install any of those types of accounts. Of course, what those will do is they will automatically sync those accounts into many of the system applications. Like uh, this one doesn't have the GNOME calendars installed. Uh, but if you were to install GNOME calendars, GNOME contacts, uh, or even the evolution application, all any of these that you have synced in and allowed the system access to the calendars, the contacts, will automatically sync up into the evolution application or into the calendars or into the contacts applications for your computer. So that is a, a nice feature here. And that's of the Cinnamon desktop, not necessarily... Uh, Debian itself. Here is your uh, your uh, startup applications. I don't have any um, need to print. I don't have Bluetooth on here, so we're going to turn those off. And uh, that is good. So we'll just turn those guys off. So that means this little print icon will not show up next time I turn the computer on. And as far as your hardware, those are pretty basic things like that. So having a look at uh, the setup here, um, a friend of mine had a look at this the other day, and he installed it from the the full DVD set you could download. I installed mine from the net installer. Uh, he didn't. He had a problem with the sudo account. I then don't know for sure if he set his up like I set mine up here. Uh, but of course, if I come over here and do a sudo apt install, let's just go with FileZilla. That would be an application I usually install. I don't have any problems with my sudo account working. And uh, he did have an issue. Again, I don't know if it's typed in something in that first password prompt or if something in that DVD set was messed up. Because there was one other thing that was messed up in his setting uh, utilizing the DVD set to install it. And that's the repository never switched over to go online. It would actually had everything called directly from a local DVD. So what he did is he had a look at his... Uh, at his sources list and so if we have a look at our Debian sources list here uh, his were not like these are referencing the online repositories his were still referencing physical CDs again I don't know if that's something that was messed up on the installation doing it from those dr drives or if that was from something else but he had to just come in here and comment out the lines looking for the local disks and just add these in and everything worked fine. Again, I didn't watch his setup, but uh, that was something that we were talking about when this first came out. So as far as other tools, of course, Flatpak is not listed in here. There's no uh, no Flatpak. Snap is not in here. Um, so uh, none of these are, are in there by default. I kind of like that. Of course, if you want to set up either of those, you easily can do that. So there is our brief look at our Debian. Overall, it looks like a, a very good, very solid system. All of the applications on here are very new as of right now. Of course, the challenge with Debian is they're going to get old and they're not going to get updated. Some people really like that. I do. I do not like my workflow changing. Um, that's why I run Arch on one of my systems. I run Endeavor OS just to keep an eye on the software that I do use on a regular basis, which allows us to uh, to prepare for installing a new operating system. But I do like the, the, uh, um, the Linux Mint and the Debians that are not constantly changing my software versions without me uh, being aware of it. So there is our look at... Uh, at Debian, it is uh, still a very nice system, and uh, I encourage you to have a look. Let me know your thoughts about it in the comments down below.